What's up guys, welcome back to the 21st episode of the Glide tutorial in which we're going to be playing around with a death condition and also just uh, it's a really small, awful explosion. So to go about it, I will create a new particle system and now please bear with me, I'm going to go super fast as I don't believe it's good looking and I also don't really do um, particle system too much, which I'm going to try and get into for the future <laughs> and future references. So we have the small particle system right here. I'm going to make, um, I'm not going to make this looping, I'm going to be making this a single effect that happens. Because of course that's going to be an explosion. Now as far as the duration goes, I'll put something like 0.1, it's a really fast explosion. So the lifetime, I'll put that on 5 seconds, that's fine. The start speed, I'll put that on 100, so it goes fast. I want something that just burst out of this uh, center point right here. The start size could be something like big, let's go with 15 in this case. And I know we don't actually see it right now, so might actually want to put that on loop just for the moment. And here we go. Okay, we have a better preview now. Um, as far as the rotation goes, we don't really want anything. The other settings, I don't really want to have anything either. Max particle, 100 is fine. Then I'll just close this one. We're going to head over to the emission. As far as the emission goes, I want a lot. So let's do 8,000 right here. Yeah, that's good. That's going to be uh, perfect right here. Um, do we need anything else? I don't think so. Let's head over to the shape. And now the shape, this is where we're going to be um, determining what kind of direction we go. Let's just go in a sphere. That's an explosion. It should go in all the angles possible. Um, the radius doesn't have to be anything. Let's put 0 0.01 so it starts from the very, very center. And then that's pretty much it. I'm also going to be changing the color over time. So maybe something, maybe we start with something like reddish or no, the red is really bad. Uh, orange-ish and then it just goes to white over time so if I just drag the white a little bit closer like this this is great this is amazing best explosion you've seen 2017 okay let's keep on going with the settings right here we can also be modifying the size over lifetime so at the beginning it's actually quite big and then it just dies off so a simple a simple like curve like this is gonna work Yep, this is going to look good. Uh, let's keep going. We're going to go with the noise because why not? Let's add some noise in here. Do we actually need noise? Is there an actual difference? I don't think so. Let's remove it. <laughs> as you can tell, I'm a very professional particle maker. And I think as far as the renderer goes, we'll be using the default one as I do not have any special material for this. And that's it. That's our explosion right here. Let's make sure we toggle off the looping so we can have a look at it by pressing simulate. And that's the very short but sweet explosion we're going to be using for our game. I encourage you to make something much greater looking, much better looking actually. So I'm going to be renaming this particle system for explosion, spooky. And then I'll drag and drop this inside of the prefab folder, like so. And now we have it saved somewhere, which is quite cool. Okay, what we need to do at this point is to actually make sure that when we hit something, we um, we basically just play that explosion, then do a, some kind of fade out effect, and then head back to the menu scene. So to do this, we're gonna be doing everything in the player motor. So let's open up the player motor script right about here. And we're gonna keep on adding fields. So let's start with the private float death time. We need to keep track of when we died. And then the death duration, that is for the uh, the fade the fade effect that I just mentioned. And then finally, public game object, that's the death explosion particle effect kind of cool looking thing that we just made. And that's it. That's all we need in terms of field. Now we just have to play around with the um, the dying part. So what's going to happen at this point is that we need to find a way to trigger death. And that is a really simple thing to do when you have a character collider. Um, we just gotta say, whenever you hit something, you're dead. As simple as that. To do that, we can use the on controller collider hit. So let's try and type that on controller collider hit. Here it is. And that's actually all we need to keep track of um, if our player hits something. So when we do hit something, set a death timestamp. So we're dead basically. Let's do death time is equal to time dot time. So we died now. And then let's do a play explosion effect. We're gonna say game object geo is equal to instantiate. We instantiate the death explosion 
and cast this as a game object because we just like doing things in a clean manner. Uh, then let's take that transform and put it on top of the player by doing geo transform is equal to transform that position. And then we're going to hide the player mesh. And this is going to be quite important. Since we're doing a fade out effect, we're not moving on from one scene to another super fast. Uh, so we don't just want to play a death explosion and then see the player intact there. That, that would be kind of weird. So uh, we're going to be hiding the player mesh and only the mesh by doing a transform get child zero. So that's the model, if you guys remember. Game object set active, putting that on false. All right, so we have a def timer, which means we can now uh, do a proper fade out effect. Let's go in our update. I'll do that at the beginning right here, actually, so I can uh, cancel all the movement. We don't need to calculate any of those movement if we're dead because we're not moving anymore and we don't even see our players. So, um, let's do if the player, if the player is dead, has a def time, basically, if def time is not equal to zero, that means the player is dead. Then we wait for x seconds, wait x seconds. So if time that time minus the def time is bigger than the duration, so def duration, at this point we've waited long enough and uh, we can go ahead and just restart the level by doing a scene manager dot instance. And this one has to, um, we need to include using Unity Engine scene management. That was my phone, sorry about that. Uh, scene management right here, instance, and then we're going to be, uh, sorry, not instance, what am I doing? A load scene. And then we're gonna be doing manager, instance, and current level, do string. Actually, no, 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 my bad. We're loading up the game scene. I'm being confused here. Sorry about this. We're loading the game scene and then the game scene is going to load the proper level by itself. And I just realized that I told you guys that we're gonna have a fade, but we don't really have a fade here. We just have the explosion effect. <laughs> Sorry about this. Let's hit return right here so we don't actually update the player when he's dead. And we're going to be giving this a try, actually. We should have um, everything ready. But one thing, actually, we need colliders. Right now in our scene, we do not have any colliders. And when I say that, I'm actually saying that we don't actually, we can't collide with anything and we can't die. Um, what do you see right here in the game or actually on the rings is trigger collider and those doesn't count. So we need to have actual real collider. What we could do is head over to the um, the preview scene, sorry, not the preview, the game scene, and create some kind of def box by creating, say, planes on all the axes that covers, like, that just encapsulate the player inside of a box. So let's do, is that too much? That's not enough, right? Let's do um, 20, 20, 20. So that might be too small, but of course we can play around with this later on. So that's the floor plane. Let's do floor. This is also going to mess up with the, the skybox if you leave it on, but we're going to be turning it off. So I'm just going to be moving this uh, at proper location. They're all really, really straight numbers. So if you just want to position them using the number here, you can also do that. So that would be minus 100. Oh, sorry, be zero. Make sure you flip it in the right position so you can see it. And we need another one for the roof. So that's forward, that's backward. That would be the roof. And the roof has to be flipped this way, moved towards a hundred, minus a hundred actually. Or I'm actually not, yeah, I'm not putting that in the right direction. My bad guys, um, it should actually be moved over to this side. So I'll do, I'll take all of them and I'll do plus 200 or plus 150 actually, or let's just put that on 100. Okay, cool, I messed up. Sorry about that, I didn't mess up the box, so I'm gonna try that again. That's 200, there's also a roof right here, it's hard to see because of the um, the back face calling, so I don't see faces from behind, but here it is. That's gonna be left side, so let's just rotate this 90 degree, put a X, actually put the Z on 100, and then the X is gonna be minus 100. So that's left. And we need another one for right. So now right is going to be 100 on this side and we need to rotate it this way. Now the fun part with this is uh, since you have back face calling enabled, even with these faces here, you can actually see your level from outside. 
uh, in case you want to be putting this dev box, so all of these things, if you want to be putting those inside of every single level, you could also do that and manually edit it if you want. Um, so I'm going to be wrapping this actually in a single object, create empty, put that under this, actually make sure I put the right position first, and then I'll put that under the dev box. Could be called anything else. And I'll make sure to select everything and disable the mesh renderer. Now, as you can tell, uh, the optimization on this really, really sucks. So I'll be removing the mesh collider and putting a box collider on every single one of those, which is going to end up with something like this. So way more optimal. And that is, of course, going to trap our player inside of the level. OK, so having this done, I can now hit play and have a look at my game and see if we do trigger the, uh, the def animation. So let's see if we messed up somewhere. No reference, exp okay, so we have a no reference, um, therefore our player did die at the very beginning and we were sent back to our game, as you can tell. So I think it dies because it spawns at the wrong, uh, it spawns directly on it. So let's just quickly check by going inside of the game, double clicking on player. And where is the dead box from here? So where's the dead box? Here it is. So it might be a little bit too close and that player has moved. What I'll do is I'll just pull the dev box a little bit backward. So I'm inside of the game scene right now and I'll just pull this one meter back or two meter back just to be safe. Three, whatever. <laughs> uh, doesn't really matter. Let's hit play or actually let's not hit play yet. Let's go inside of the game scene, click on our player and drag and drop our prefab for the explosion right here then we can go ahead and hit play so here we are let's open up any level all of the levels should have a dev box in it and we exploded right away again so that's definitely a bad thing but as you can tell there is animation uh, we can't fully see the explosion the simple reason is because we're still in the fade and uh, let's actually look at why it does that because that bothers me quite a lot and I'm quite stupid because what we're hitting is not the back of the box, it's actually the uh, the floor of the box, which is on the same level as, well, our whole thing. So uh, we're going to be taking this dev box and just moving it down. So I'll just be putting it back on, say, minus 5 for the Z. But we're going to be putting that at minus 100, I think would be good. So that makes more sense and the player can start right there and not on the floor. And this way, we're going to have the perfect thing going right now. I'm currently under the Unity remote, so I'm going to be able to play and just run into something. Uh, any death wall, so I'll just do a U-turn really quickly. Let's try that. So quick U-turn. And we're going to try and hit the death box over here. And boom. Okay, so we just exploded. That is definitely great. That is the best thing we could have done. So right now, we can actually lose, which is you know, part of a game. Um, and that's where we're going to be ending today's episode. Actually, I hope you like this. I hope you like the video. And also, just I hope you enjoy your day because that's that would suck. I really hope you enjoy your day right now. Else I would feel bad. Um, so please don't make me feel bad. I'm just trying to help. Thank you. Click on the video. Move on to the next one. The next one is going to be about creating some money. So some tokens. That's going to be amazing. I'm telling you, it's going to be great. It's going to be easy. Thank you so much. Goodbye.